Well, first and foremost, I thought uh, the game would hope would be very good because it's an outstanding program. And I, when I got my start in Division III uh, at Alma College at the age of 20, uh, Hope was then and still is one of the premier programs in Division Three. And what was uh, ironic and cool tonight at the same time is Glenn Van Weeren uh, was in the building uh, with their athletic director. And as I told my team, at the Division Three level, he's on par with a Bob Knight, a Roy Williams, a Mike Krzyzewski, and a Jim Beheim when it comes to wins and what he did. And Greg Mitchell was a part of his teams. So um, it... it, it they were always the program that was that that everyone was measured by back in the MIAA, um, where my roots are, and uh, they lived up to every bit of what I thought they would be, and they were even better because they lost some guys too, and we knew they moved very well without the ball, and we knew that they did a great job of cutting off the post, and they had a tremendous game plan the way that they wanted to go down inside, and and they moved on the airtime of the pass into their post doubles. At times, there were three guys down there guarding the post, and that was great for us to see and have to make the adjustments on. So um, everything we could have wanted in this game was there. They made us play extremely hard. Uh, our mistakes uh, came out. The things that we haven't spent very much time on uh, came out. Uh, the things that, that we've got to get better at were, were clear. Some of our strengths came out, but the bottom line is after a month of practice to play against a team uh, that will coach that good uh, in this environment was really good. It was great for us. So um, we played extremely hard. We played a lot of different lineups. I wouldn't read anything to any of the lineups. Could change again on, on uh, Saturday. To me, it's about having as many multidimensional, versatile guys that can play numerous positions for us. And, and try to build ourselves to get a team that, that can bring fatigue to the game. And um, we've, we've not, there's a lot of, we didn't put a zone offense in until yesterday. Uh, we've done nothing outside of man-to-man -man defense at this point. And we've got a long way to go on a lot of learning, but the most important thing is we're playing hard. Uh, we move the ball. Uh, we got guys back that, 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 that get that confidence of playing that first game that had not played uh, either since before Carolina or in the case of James, you know, right after Christmas. And uh, it was great to see that. So a lot of things for us to improve upon. I thought we improved in the game, and uh, we went against a very well-coached team. It was, it was very cool to play against Ron Blackledge's grandson and Todd Blackledge's son. And we knew he was a good player, and he's even better than I thought after watching him on film. I mean, after being in the game with him tonight. And uh, that was another a cool sidelight uh, for this building tonight to have the black ledges in it. So with that said, anything I can answer about our team? You mentioned last night you'd be looking at ball movement mm -hmm. offensively and transition defense. Oh, you have to go back to yeah, I'll go to the film on that. I thought the ball moved well. We still have to we still have to interpret. Our spacing is not there yet. I think that's one of the things our space our, our spacing was a little bit of the product of some of our turnovers. And, um, again, it, we'll, we'll, we'll grade the transition defense. I thought the effort was good. Uh, where we made mistakes is in which we've really got to learn, which is harder for these guys with the way that we want to guard three-point shooters and guard the penetration. We're not an overhelp team. That's not – and a lot of times guys come in and they see that ball being driven or somebody's getting beat. We've got to do a better job on the ball, but we've got to do a better job of, of early help on the ball, okay, so we get back to our shooters because we're going to see some really good shooters. And we wanted to treat number 11 like that tonight. We wanted to treat number 11 like that's a guy we're not coming off of. And that's harder. It's easier said than done. It takes a little time for us to get to that point. So, so that's part of it. And they did a good job in the corners tonight. We got our corner game going more in the second half, especially when I made our 6'11 uh, sophomore become the three-man tonight. The corner was filled every time. So, but but – uh, Again, we'll get better with that. Our transition D will get better. I thought our running game was pretty solid, even though our spacing on the break uh, left a little bit desired. We didn't get it inside as quick as we could have. But we didn't run a, we didn't run a real – we don't have a big package right now of, of offensive arsenal things to go to. We're, we just haven't done it yet. But I thought the ball moved at a pretty good rate. It didn't seem like your defensive intensity was – at the beginning, but really improved as the game went on. Would you agree with that? Uh, I don't know if I would call it the intensity. The intent was good. I don't think I, that's a group that, that has not played together very much yet. 
Jawan just got back, right? I mean, literally, he hasn't been back a week yet when it comes to live basketball. It's by far the most he did, you know, was tonight. So, and we, and we had him guarding the point guard, right? So it's a little different. So uh, I, I want this team to learn how to get the old saying of get comfortable in the uncomfortable. Well, it, it's also how you deal with change, how you deal with sudden change, right? Like that's a football term, right? But it's also a basketball term for us. With, with, with not just how do you react to a turnover, but how do, you, how do you react to different teammates that you haven't spent much time with on the court yet. So um, intensity definitely picked up as we got more comfortable with that. But I thought our intent was very good from the beginning, which is what you want. Um, you've spoken previously about wanting to see OG shoot you know, more consistently, quicker, uh, you know, shoot with more range. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I can never measure, I never look at it as a, as a schedule. Like sometimes you can, we'll get some comparison points to where guys in the past were. You know, so, okay, well, we've got him on this track or we've got him on that track. I, I'll, I'll sometimes do that. OG, it spends as much time in the gym as anybody we've had here at his age. And if that continues to keep up, I mean, extra time. If that continues to keep up, um, he, he, will be, he, he will be in a really good place. You know, we've had recruits come in in the past and like maybe it's a, we're going to go at noon or we're going to go at 12.30 and walk them out and say, this is why, this is why this is a great place if you love to do this. And they say, okay, wait, look at these, these two or three guys are already out on the court working with the GMs or working with the managers and it's 10.30, right? And we're not even going till noon. You know, that, and they're not being asked and they're not being told to and they're not being coached other than the, the guys are rebounding the ball for them. So that, that's why we have a player development program the way that it is. That's why we have the um, – the players always create the structure, right? I mean, the coaches create the structure, I mean, but the players create the culture. And when you've got that kind of work ethic, and OG has it, and others have it as well, and I think uh, he's going to continue to get better shooting the ball. And he's, he's got to get better at a lot of things, but he works very hard at those things, and shooting certainly a big part of it. Well, he hasn't shown any since he's been back out there, which is good because we weren't putting him out until he was without question healed. I mean, so if something ever happens again, knock on wood, it's not going to be because he he didn't heal properly, right? So, I mean, he's he's fully healed and fully cleared. And uh, I think we could have put him out there a month ago and it, it, we wouldn't have noticed the difference in him. I mean, that's just how he is. And, and look at how many times he came back from it last year. I mean, I'm not sure how many guys would have done that, really. I mean, in, in the sense of, like, getting cleared and then coming back out there and doing all the extra rehab. And Tim deserves a lot of credit for that. He was given a new name by, by Grant Galon. He called him Dr. Tim. So I now refer to him as Dr. Tim. So first, I already thought he was, but now Grant thinks he is too, so that's good enough for me. So Dr. Tim um, has done a great job with him, as have uh, Dr. Rink, Dr. Alfeld did the surgery. So, but these guys, every one of the guys that have come back from the injury, you, you, you can't push them past being timid. You can't push them into feeling they're comfortable. Only they can do that. And, and, and we leave them alone on that. They've got to feel that. And they've done a really good job of that. So he plays. He's just, he needs this time. He needs to continue to have that versatility for us. He's going to be a guy that, especially with Colin out, that is going to play just numerous roles for us. Um, Zach, Rob, Zach McRoberts has got to work his way into that. And uh, as I told Zach, I mean, just I, I, I'll tell you when I don't think you're good enough or you can't play. So until you hear it from me, just go out there and treat yourself like you've, you've been here a long time. And he'll get that as well. So um, I didn't think any of them played like they'd been injured at all. And that was good. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he'll continue to get better, too. He's learning the nuances of it and, and uh, really working a lot with his footwork. You know, he's so quick, and sometimes he's too quick, you know, with the ball. So you have to, he has to, uh, you know, where, where, where he doesn't get his feet down the way that they have to be. But the, the reasons we offered him when we did is because not only of his talent. You could see his talent before we offered. It was his precision. It was his execution. 
Uh, it was not only his three-point shot making, it was the way he delivered the ball. It was the way he got up and defended people. It was the velocity that he put on the ball in his passes. It was the force that he played defense with. And I think we're seeing that and as he gets more and more confident. We're asking a lot of him because every one of the freshmen, and Duran will get there, and even though Duran is more – Duran's got great feet. He's just – he's we're, we're playing him like he's a hockey player right now. I mean, it's, it's very short shifts for him. And, and we're both on the same page with that. And we just talked about it again because Duran's going to be a very good player. But he's got, he's got to get healthy. He's got to work his way into the condition. He's a product of not being here this summer and then having some setbacks uh, in, the, in the fall with some injury things. So um, Devontae and Curtis are guys that are going to continue to get better and better inside of that. And Grant just needs to get the defense down and get his confidence down. Uh, and, and he'll get better and better. But Devontae and Curtis can be very interchangeable for us, and we'd like to get it to the point where um, they understand exactly how to make everybody else better, like our team is learning how to make them better. James is back from the knee injury. Mm -hmm. He missed you know, obviously the last half of last year. What did he learn during that time out, do you think, and what has he shown you that he's added to his game? Well, I think it's ongoing. I, I think we've been very hard on the juniors. I have been. Um, for, for reasons of leadership and not just playing, but, but the responsibility that they have to take for everybody else. All three of them are quiet by nature, James as well. And, and, it's, and it, it's, and all three of them are coming back from major surgeries, you know, and this was the first time we forget about Josh, you know, he hadn't played, not only hadn't played in a year, but a year ago he was barely walking, you know, when he, when, when he was here. So he's the micro fracture surgery is a very, very, tough surgery to come back from. And so we're asking a lot of the juniors. We know they've overcome some things. And James is the epitome of a guy that has got so much more to give, and we're going to hold him to a high expectation level of it. But I thought he moved the ball. I thought he talked better tonight. I thought he moved without the ball. I thought he was ready to shoot. We put him in the post. You know, there are different things that, that, that we can do. And the more that they get comfortable back in their own skin, of playing the game after the time that they've missed, the more they'll get comfortable with their teammates. But with our schedule, we're trying to push that a little bit faster. You know, we don't have three or four games before we get into a, uh, a big game, big name team situation. We start it right away. But I'm, 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 I thought he did a good job tonight as well. I'll see what the film says, but I thought he did a really good job. Okay, Casey James. Cool. One more? I saw, go ahead, then I saw one back there. But go ahead. Uh, just in terms of James and leadership, that, that was something that Yogi kind of talked about trying to aid hope out of him, trying to push him along and say, hey, you got to be the leader next year when I'm gone. Is that something you have to force out of him, or do you see the qualities? In no, it needs to be forced, but it needs to be forced out of Yogi as well, right? I mean, it, it really did. Yogi's leadership went to a whole other level when we got into the Big Ten season. What, lo what Yogi had was a presence, was a durability, and people had a real comfort level playing with him because it was like it was safe to play with Yogi because Yogi was so good. Yogi could do so many different things. So there's different forms of leadership. But verbal, demanding, make the game easier for everybody else, that takes time for guys. It's very unnatural for most people. And so you're, you're trying to get, you got to speed that process up. It's like player development, all right? You speed the process up for them. Now you slow it down if it becomes too much. But a lot of times guys don't understand the, 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 the abilities that they have, and it's your job as a coach and a coaching staff to pull, them out of, or pull that out of them. So they'll get there. They'll get there. We want them to be comfortable, but we also want them to make the game easier for their teammates. And a lot of times it's not only the nonverbal presence, it's the verbal presence that's got to be there. And then it makes it easier for them as well. Go ahead. One back there. Josh, I'm good. Uh, you have one? For those of us who won't be here Friday, I mean, just your thoughts on playing the Scott Downey team. Well, um, it, it really, the, the date worked for us as, as much as anything else. And um, uh, he's a very good coach. It's a very good program. And uh, they'll play extremely hard. And uh, we're not used to doing things with a team two years in a row. Uh, but we have a lot of respect for him. And again, the date worked for us um, because we wanted to play that date, knowing, what we, knowing when we're leaving for Hawaii. And um, um, our guys will be ready. You know, I'm sure they will be too, but our guys will be ready. They're tremendous screening, cutting, move without the ball team. They put a lot of pressure on you with their cuts. So we're going to have to defend that at a high level. And uh, um, they'll be a little more um, 
Um, we may have to guard in the half court a little bit longer at times, you know. So that'll be a part of it too. So it'll be a great, it'll be a great next step for these guys. Okay, thank you. One note on Robert.